Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and today we are unfortunately back with another goodbye video after we did the same with our pond zoo this week. And I gotta admit, when I just opened this file again after such a long time, I did secretly fell in love with this project again because there are some really cool habitats in here, which I even forgot about. But still, like for those of you that have been following my channel for a while now, that know that I also did an African Mimi Zoo franchise mode series and this was definitely one of my best projects ever made in Planet Zoo, at least in my opinion. And I think Abuya Zoo was just a great first step and maybe a try to jump into an African themed zoo and to learn a lot more about making highly detailed habitats. So yeah, it is with a little bit of pain in my heart to say goodbye to Abuya Zoo, but I really think Think that I won't be returning to Oboya Zoo anymore to continue and finish it. So yeah, it's definitely better to just say a proper goodbye to the zoo and close the Abuya Zoo chapter. So without further talking, let's jump into it one more time and check out everything that we did. And we're going to start here, which I think was also the first habitat that we built, which was like a huge meerkat habitat with like these cool little details here with the jeep safari and then uh this, this was a really big habitat which i feel like it's more like a meerkat paradise and it was really a lot of fun to see all these meerkats like digging these holes and stuff right over here and then right over here they can also go to a little bit more smaller area where the guests can experience the meerkat a little bit more nearby and just enjoy them uh, behind the glass, basically. So they have a little feeding plate right over here. And there is also like this, this tunnel enrichment item for them to enjoy and to play with. Definitely really cool habitat, but this is not all. Look at all these holes. Oh my goodness. But on the other side right over here, we also have an indoor area, which I also am super proud of. Um, so we have the entrance here with like this cool meerkat statue. I just really love look at this i can't even remember what this was inspired by but it is a very cool small indoor area so i wasn't able to do really crazy things because of the fact that you you were like forced of course to pay attention to the traversable area so so that is why i i only kept like two different spaces but it's just really nice to have like these webcams right over here and like this this area where they can get some more privacy and where the guests can also get a little bit more of a I don't know how even to call it I just really do like it also the lighting in here was a lot of fun to do and it's just a really tiny indoor area for these meerkats and you know what from these meerkats we can actually go outside right over here like a, a big difference with this zoo and pond zoo that we did is that um, this zoo is more compact. I'm not sure if that is the right word to say, but it's like more connected to each other. So it feels more as a whole, even though the zoo is still not or far from finished yet. But we have a fennec box habitat, which is also humongous. And we have an enrichment item right over here. So the guests can already get a tiny glimpse here from the Fennec Fox if they are playing here with the bubbles and then they can go to here so you have like this peek through to the meerkat habitat and then you have this area out there it's like the biggest Fennec Fox habitat you've ever seen in Planet Zoo probably oh look there is one so all these habitats or all these areas i should say are connected with tunnels so there is a tunnel underneath here is a tunnel and this goes all the way up here and then there is a tunnel right over there so this whole thing is connected to each other and the guests can walk underneath here to get to the other side and i do really love the habitat even though i'm like uh, is it very realistic? Not really for a zoo, maybe like um, more of like a wildlife park or something like that, resembling more of their natural habitat, even though the other habitats are not per se super big. I think only the meerkat and the fennec fox habitat are quite big, 
<laughs> when you compare it to the size of these animals. Look, there is a little one. But it is a beautiful habitat nonetheless. I really did enjoy building this one, especially because of all the tunnels and stuff. I really just wanted to make it work. And then they have a cave right over here and a little section where the guests can also see them more up close if they are on that area. And of course, they have a water area here to cool down. And we also have... Are we going... Are we going over that bridge? You know what? No, we're going to continue here. We will uh, follow the path because I think, if I remember correctly, this is going around the habitat and else we will just uh, skip through it. Also, one of my most favorite lemur islands that I built, I had so much fun making this one, but also because of the black and white rough lemur just looking so beautiful against this this orange color or orange brown color of the rocks and then the green they look so gorgeous and everything being so tropical and lush and tiny i really try to pay more attention to the size of this island so yeah it's good that it's sandbox mode because else this would probably not really work but I don't know, it just looks super nice in my opinion. And they are also able to walk behind here, so they still have uh, that as well. And they are also able to climb up here. So I did try to give them as much space to use as possible. And of course this feeder, and this one can be filled, right? Yes, it can be filled by the keeper. So the keeper is also able to use this pathway to fill up this uh this feeder right over there and then right over here they also have an indoor area so they have a little bridge here connected to the habitat and then right over here we have uh, a little awning so the guests can stand in the shadow because it's quite warm right over here it's 37 degrees right now and then we have a pretty simple indoor area for the uh, black and white rough lemur obviously there is no lemur in here because it's probably too hot so i would also enjoy the outside if it would be me also one of my most favorite warthog habitats gosh i totally forgot about this one as well this one is that is there one warthog yes okay so i did hide the forge box feeder in here and then we have a little cave inside there which is super tiny but it does work for them and then they have a mud pool right over here, which was so much fun to like lower into the ground with all these, these rock formations in here. So it does work super well. We have enrichment items right over here. And then there is like this little bridge, a little overpass for the guests to walk over. And then on the other side, there is also a dirty water pool so they can uh, have a little drink and also clean themselves when they come out of this uh, mud pool right over here. And I don't know, I just really had a lot of fun building. Oh my goodness, there are so many warthogs in here. That's insane. But definitely had a lot of fun building this uh, tiny warthog habitat with a lot of different corners and stuff to really explore. Oh gosh, and there are more babies on their way. Are we going to my most favorite habitat from the zoo? No, we're not going there yet. <laughs> so let's go around here first. We have, this is a springbok or is this a Tom's and gazelle? Tom's and gazelle and white rhino. Yes, you can see the white rhino from there already. I think I had the biggest struggle with this habitat, especially with the outside. I just wasn't quite sure what to do with the edge and and if i liked all these pink purple flowers on the edge so um i think i am still happy with the habitat but it's not like the habitat i am mostly proud of or something and i, I think this was also one of the projects of this zoo that kind of turned me off at some point because i just wasn't entirely happy with the edges of the habitat or something i don't know what it was at least they have a nice water area. Oh man, I just love these guys so much. Nice water area to also cool down and to wash themselves if they want to. And then right over here, this is to the the backstage door for the uh, for the keepers. And this is a half leaf finished dome. 
Really cool indoor area. I also love the lighting here from these uh, uh, glass pieces. And they have a really cute indoor area right over here. Super happy with how this has turned out. It's small, but it works. And for sandbox mode, we obviously don't have to pay attention to the size of the habitat that they need. So it does work. And I think if you just look at the habitat itself, it is quite big. So for me, <laughs> I think it's big enough. But yeah, if you would turn on the traversable area and the, all the other needs that they have, they will probably say it's, it's too tiny still, especially with all the Thompson gazelles in here as well. And the rhino itself also needs a lot of space. Little waterfall in here to decorate it as well. Works super well in my opinion. So definitely a really nice habitat, especially the inside. I'm super happy with. Also, the details here of the dome look super nice. So yeah, okay, let's continue. So we go around here and then we see the other side of the rhino habitat. Nothing really different from uh, the other side that we just saw. But it is uh, giving them quite a lot of space in here. So now we go, this is staff. Oh, we can go to the staff area first. This is... I think probably the last area that I built, but this was, I do have to mention that, this was before we got the conservation pack. So this was my first staff building, detailed staff area, backstage area that I made without the conservation pack. So yeah, if you uh, decide to download this file and to finish it and you have the conservation pack, you can definitely get back to this area and add some more stuff in here. I did use a lot of the Africa pack to obviously uh, make it all look nice and pretty, but it's, uh, yeah, it can definitely use some more details to create the perfect backstage area. But this one also includes something I never built before. It's like this, this little backstage area for the meerkat. Uh, so that the staff and your vet can take good care of them, especially if they're sick, for example. And we also have the same here for the fennec fox. So a really tiny area, especially for backstage. So yeah, if your staff needs to pay more attention uh, to them, to their health, then they are able to bring the animals backstage here and take care of them. Look, I'm only using oranges and melons and some, some, some carton boxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny to see that. Okay, so now we go back right over here. I also really like how this all, how lush it all is and how beautiful. Okay, and now we go over the Fennec Fox habitat. There is a feeder right over here. And we also have some Fennec Fox signs here, which I also really do like. And then they can look into the habitat from here as well. I think if I remember correctly... Or wasn't the Fennec Fox able to, to climb up on here? Was it on the other side? Look how cute. I love these signs so much. So we look into the habitat from here. Into the Yes. Oh, here it is. So here you have like this, this ramp going up. And then there's like this sniffing enrichment feeder or something. Yes. Oh, look. It's actually being used even. So yeah, I did that on purpose. Just to make sure that... They are able to, to get up here, up close to uh, to the guests so they can enjoy it. And we have a nice view right over here as well to the habitat. Definitely really cool habitat, but as I said, maybe a little bit too big for the Fennec Fox, but it was a lot of fun to experience it. So did we? No, we did not see all the habitats yet. We are going to... The mandrel habitat. Now I have mixed feelings about this one. I do really like how this is sunken into the ground a little bit and how the edge here is decorated. And uh, as well as this, I do really like this with the, uh, what is it called again? The lock pieces and the green on top of it. I think this was also inspired by some kind of real life habitat, but if you want to know, then you probably need to open that specific episode so you, you will know. But this one has like these interesting integrations in the rock formations. That was really cool, but also quite hard to make sure that it was working because all these uh, log pillars also have like climbing frames and stuff. 
But you see that a lot in zoos, but we have quite some big pieces, so it doesn't really work super well, in my opinion, to create it yourself. Uh, we have a waterfall in the middle and, and pretty much two sides here for the mandrels to enjoy. Not that many climbing frames because they can obviously also climb into the trees. So I think that was also inspired by that real life habitat, whatever it was. So now let's go. Even though you have seen it already, I do really love this habitat so much. And I, I think you already also noticed that I used this building for the African mini zoo series that we did. So it's definitely, I don't know, it's a building I'm just super happy with and super proud of. It was quite a hard and, and challenging to make it all work with all these plaster pieces and my own made, myself made windows and stuff. But I'm just super happy with the result. Also, it was inspired by a real life habitat that I can't remember the name of. Uh, but yeah, it's probably a building that I will be using a lot more in the future as well if I ever feel like it fits in a certain theme. Penguin Research Center or Education Center was also something that was from the real life zoo. With a waterfall, they actually have like this really big waterfall system right over here, which you can also look under from the education center, I think. But all these kind of things are just barely doable to achieve with the V of X's that we have in the game. I'm also really happy with the fences and stuff here with the bamboo pieces and the rope. You can do some really cool things in the game. And, and this is one of the examples that, I don't know, it's, it's just all working super nicely and it just looks super nice as well. Uh, they can also climb up here and there's an enrichment item here, the sprinkler. And then we can go backstage here. Nice backstage area. I think in the time when I made this, it was one of my first backstage areas where I put more details and attention to. But definitely a really nice area. Oh, there are actually no babies in here at all. Probably turned that off. Also that little pool right over here. This is not included in the African mini zoo because I just needed more space because that was a franchise mode episode. And this is all made in sandbox mode. So yeah, the restrictions are a lot different. And then right over here, the Penguin Education Center, probably also the first education center that I built in Planet Zoo, or one of the first at least. And it was a lot of fun to, to do this and to create my own screenshots and stuff and to create like this billboard. I do see that some of the webcam footage are not um, in there anymore, so I probably accidentally removed them from my folder. But you can, if you want to, download all these billboards that you're seeing and these webcam footage. Oh, these are working. So, mm, okay. You can also download these, these these webcam footage. Like it's it's just a video recording and then put onto these TV screens. So it's not like an actual webcam that is connected to these TV screens, unfortunately, because that just doesn't work. But yeah, if you want to download them, the link for my Discord server is in the description of this video and with this cool underwater viewing gallery. And uh, you can also download this one separately if you want to use them for your own zoos. So yeah, now I almost thought that we were at the end of the tour, but that is not the case because there is my very first nocturnal house in the zoo as well. So right over here, you have the meerkat on this side. And then if you walk to the left side, you have this cute artwork habitat with an outdoor area. And a bureau, I think, yeah, the bureaus were introduced with the African pack, right? Uh, so we have some really nice rock formations here. This is also a more smaller habitat that we did. But I do really like how this is all set up with different sections in their habitat. We have a hidden uh, water pipe right over here because you guys know me by now. I think they're hideous. And then right over here, before we go inside... We have this to go to the indoor nocturnal house and just a little, it's not super special, but just a little backstage area for the art parks. So if we now go around right over here, this, this definitely was one of my most special builds ever because it was so much fun to explore if this was possible or not, because that was really the question, like, is this going to work? Am I able to make something as tiny as this 
including a burrow still. So it definitely was challenging. I do notice that these billboards are not working. I think there's a blue night sky or something uh, included here as well. But yeah, it um, it's definitely one of my most... What are you doing with that box? It's almost like you're stuck or something, but I don't know. Can we just move you? But this was my, my first try of making something this tiny and indoor, and I absolutely loved it. It was challenging, but a lot of fun and just super happy with the end result. So I think by now you can tell how much I, I, I learned in Abuya Zoo and how much fun it was. And, and, and I, I do think that all these habitats are actually just really good looking and it all fits nicely together. So I, I don't have anything to, oh no, see, now I forget again because we have another habitat. Right over here in the back, we have a Hina habitat as well. Oh my goodness, how could I forget? <laughs> I think this one was also inspired by some kind of real life zoo. And I did really like to play around with these metal pieces to create a more realistic fence. And I think I also got that from some kind of real life zoo. I, I did mention that all in the episode itself. And I will leave the playlist of this whole zoo in the description of this video as well if you... Uh, want to check it out and want to see how I build everything, uh, then you can watch all the speed build videos that I have on my channel. And right over here, we have a little cave for the spotted hyena as well. It's a nice habitat. It's, it's, I, I do really like the edge right over here as I said with the fencing and stuff. Overall, it's not my most favorite hyena habitat, um, but it, it doesn't look bad. I, I definitely uh, do think that. So now I'm really going to end this video before I miss out on any more habitats. Even in my own zoos, I miss out on habitats, you guys. <laughs> but yeah, do let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are of Abuya Zoo. And as I said, if you want to download the zoo yourself, you can download it via the Steam Workshop and uh, just use it and, and add things upon it and make it your own, obviously, if you want to. I do really hope, even though I did not finish the zoo, that it will provide you with a lot of uh, inspiration for your African zoos or African habitats. And if you are looking for more African-themed habitats, definitely go and watch my African mini zoo franchise mode series, because as I said in the beginning, it's like one of my most favorite zoos that I've ever built in planet zoo and i think it's it's a big inspiration for a lot of african zoos and it was really a lot of fun to build so if you're looking for inspiration definitely go and check out that series as well do let me know of course what you all think of the goodbye of abuya zoo leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you haven't already and yeah i just really do hope to see you guys all in the next one thank you guys so much for watching bye guys